Choosing which stateroom to select on a ship doesn't only mean choosing between an interior room and a balcony. Selecting the location of your stateroom can be just as important as which type of cabin you book. In today's video, we're going to give an overview of the seven worst places to book a cabin on a cruise ship. Here we go. Would you be shocked if I told you the worst cruise ship cabin I've ever had was also the biggest and nicest? Yep, that's right. The worst cruise cabin I've ever had was a two bedroom suite on board Norwegian's Pride of America. The cabin was massive and a huge cry from the interior cabins that we usually would book. While sailing the Hawaiian islands was absolutely stunning, we didn't realize how choppy the waters would be sailing from one island to the next. Unfortunately, our massive cabin was at the very front of the ship. Lessons were learned from our perfect Hawaiian storm. Being at the very front and the top of a cruise ship while sailing through choppy Pacific waters left us all seasick for multiple nights. Luckily, we had two overnight stays that had us grateful for motionless sleep. We've also been unlucky to have staterooms too close to the elevator, directly under the pool deck, and too close to the theater. Choosing the best stateroom on a cruise ship can require more research than simply booking a hotel room. Everyone has different preferences when it comes to what they look for in a stateroom. Being on a higher deck can give great views, while being on a lower deck offers more stability for motion-sensitive cruisers. Some love to book balconies on the very back of the ship for the extra balcony space and the incredible views, whereas others like to book rooms midship to be close to all the onboard activities. As a rule of thumb, I try to book a cabin that is surrounded by other cabins both above and below. Typically, midship is our top choice due to the location on deck and limiting overall motion. This usually ensures that you will have a quiet, more secluded cabin location. Here are some of the worst cruise ship cabins location to avoid when booking your next cruise. Number one, an obstructed view. The amount of obstruction can vary when you book an obstructed view. Some cabins might still offer somewhat enjoyable views while others might be entirely blocked by a lifeboat. Either way, you probably won't be getting the full value of an ocean view or balcony cabin when you have any sort of obstruction. If you're going to have an obstructed view cabin, you might as well save the money and just book an inside cabin instead. Most cruise lines will indicate if the cabin has any sort of obstruction, so be sure to pay close attention to that on the deck plans. Number two, near the nightclub. If you want to be on a higher deck, be sure you consider where the nightclub is located on board the cruise ship. Some cabins are directly below or above the dance floor where you can hear the DJ bopping tunes into the night. No one wants to have their cabin walls shake. Those who love to enjoy the nightclub are usually also drinking, meaning these passengers can be very loud when you are trying to sleep. You might also want to consider avoiding staterooms near the piano bar or other entertainment venues if you have an early bedtime or you're traveling as a family. These venues will be open into the late hours of the night, which can certainly keep you awake. Number three, too close to the elevators. Choosing a cabin close to the elevators might seem like a great idea, after all, you won't need to walk very far up or down the long hallways to snag an elevator. But think again, elevators are typically places of congregation for people. Starting early in the morning, don't be surprised to probably be hearing people talking while waiting for the elevator. Late in the evening, you can also hear people coming back to their cabin after a night of partying, not to mention the elevator ding every time someone presses the buttons. You should also consider that people will always be walking by your room during all hours of the day when you choose to be close to the elevators. Try to choose a cabin that's further down from the elevators to avoid unnecessary noise and traffic near your cabin. Number four, below the pool deck. On a recent cruise, we thought it might be a great idea to be under the pool deck since it didn't appear to be directly under the pool itself. Well, we were wrong. Each morning around 6 a.m., we could hear workers rolling carts with food to the nearby pool cafe. It was like clockwork each morning that we would hear them rolling their carts to unload the snacks. And we also heard crew members dragging chairs around the solarium each morning to arrange them perfectly. The pool deck is always busy during a cruise, from people dancing to the belly flop contest. Music will be playing most of the day with some cruise lines showing poolside movies in the evening. Needless to say, the pool deck can be very noisy, and avoiding a cabin below the pool deck is probably a good idea. Number five, adjoining cabins. Unless you're traveling together with the group in the adjoining room, definitely avoid these cruise ship cabins. 
These cabins are great for families traveling together who might want to have a door between the two cabins, but these rooms are not great for groups that are not traveling together. The door between the adjoining rooms isn't exactly soundproof. Keep in mind that sound already travels easily between cabins, so extra noise will be very noticeable. You might be hearing your neighbor more than you want to. Number six, above the casino. The casino is typically one of the only places inside a cruise ship where travelers can smoke on board. In addition, the casino is usually open late for cruisers looking to have some evening fun. Some cruise lines have banned smoking in the casino, like Celebrity Cruises and Oceana Cruises. Either way, do a little extra research to see where your cabin is relative to the casino. Smoking and gambling noise might end up being a concern for you. Number seven, too far forward or too far aft. Just like my Hawaii cabin, choosing a stateroom that's too far forward or aft can be a bad choice. If you encounter rough seas, this means you will experience and feel more of the ship's pitching and rolling. This is definitely not good for cruisers that are worried about getting motion sick. You might get lucky with very smooth sailing during your voyage. For instance, I've sailed the Mediterranean multiple times and I've never had rough seas. I would probably be more comfortable with a cabin that's slightly more forward or aft in this instance. Sailing on the open ocean is usually a different story. This can sometimes mean rougher seas, so I will always book a midship room. So there you have it, the top seven worst cruise ship cabin locations to avoid. Let us know in the comments below what cruise ship cabins you usually pick and which ones you think should be avoided. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on your notifications so that you can be notified when we post a brand new video. Until next time, happy cruising!